whether or not all disorders are pure disorders and cannot be gifts at all has always been controversial. I mean, have you ever smelled colors? Or perhaps tasted musical notes? Or has your mind ever generated colors beyond the visible spectrum? Well, if you could relate to any of these, you, my friend, have synesthesia. My name is Wesley Trisnati, and I, a fellow synesthete, will be discussing this disorder, synesthesia, and how it proves that not all disorders are pure disorders, for they could have strengths as well. What is synesthesia? Synesthesia is when the stimulation of one sense automatically triggers another. For example, when a synesthete hears a sound which appeals to his or her auditory sense, this synesthete is able to taste that sound or musical note. Now, this is just one example. Um, another example could be maybe you smell um, a certain smell and colors pop up. Let's say you smell cherries and brown pops up in your mind. So the word sin means joint, anesthesia means senses. Therefore, together, synes synesthesia means joint senses. Now, you're probably wondering, why haven't I heard about this before? And where did synesthesia come from? Now, because it's really complex and rare, and only about 4% of the world has this, even so today, scientists don't really know where, I mean, what really causes synesthesia. But a common theory is that the neurons in your minds for different senses are supposed to separate um, like after four months. So let's say this is your um, hearing sense and this is your tasting sense. They're supposed to separate, but for synesthetes, they always stick together. That's why when you hear a sound, you taste something, and it's always um, automatic. Now, um, genetics is um, the... People think genetics is the main reason of where synesthesia came from, and because most of the theories involved neurobiology. And speaking of genetics, when I was younger, my sister and I often argued, what color is the letter A? What color is the number 10? And obviously, we ended up in disagreement, because for synesthetes, it's always unique. So not only is synesthesia rare, but within, within the 4% of the world's population, um, it's unique, so everyone perceives things differently. Now, there are many types of synesthesia, because synesthesia is basically, like I said earlier, the um, combination or two or more senses crossing paths together. This is the most common form of synesthesia called grapheme color synesthesia. Uh, this is what I was born with, and so for example, as you can see there, a non-synesthete sees apple, just apple. But for a sure synesthete, he, actually, he or she sees it with colors. Now, it's not a hallucination. You don't actually, like in your math test, you don't actually see number five with red, for example. But in your mind, when you think of five, you think of red. So if you were wondering, this is how I view the alphabetical letters and numbers. Um, as you can see, it's really colorful. And to tell you the truth, I can't fully describe what, um, what like, texture or even color it is because sometimes my mind generates its own color, and so as much as I want to explain to it, I can't. Let's see, G looks like a green there, but to be honest, it's a bit of a gray, a bit of a green, like I just can't explain it. And sometimes it's also about texture, opacity, and thickness, so it's not all about colors. And it's always the same, so for me, A is always a red, B is always a blue, S is always school bus yellow, never anything else. Now this is how I view my own name, and as you can see down there, only the capital letters are colorized, Sometimes only like the dominant letter comes up, which is like the capital letter in names, and that's why sometimes I see the whole num name in colors. Sometimes I just see the first capital letters. Uh, so there are two, like yeah, about two types of graphene color synesthetes. Sometimes you can actually see the the colors on like let's say your math test, and sometimes it's just in your mind. So this can actually help you. You can easily identify what's two and what's five there, because of graphene color synesthesia. Sometimes your mind it's sort of gives identity towards um, numbers and letters. So for example, for me, the number nine is always a female because for me, it's the color pink. And pink is like a feminine color. That's why nine is always a pink for me. And W, like my own name, is always um, light blue in my mind. So whenever I think of my, myself or anybody with the name W, or just the letter W itself, I think of youth. Now, this is because of a reason, the graphene color synesthesia. But what if you just sort of um, like have like, your mind just randomly gives personalities or identities to number. This is called ordinal linguistic personification. So this is basically when your mind, like, let's say number five is a little boy who likes skateboarding and likes to wear caps for no reason. It's just how your mind works. Now, another rare form is called lexical gustatory synesthesia. This is when you hear a sound or word and you're able to taste it somewhat. So for example, maybe the word dog tastes sour in your mouth, or it can taste sweet, depending on who you are. Now, 
an even rarer form and a little creepy form, honestly, it's called mirror touch synesthesia. This is when you actually, let's say you see a person getting touched on the shoulder and you feel the exact sensa same sensation on your shoulder. Isn't that kind of creepy? And I'm, I'm actually glad I don't actually have this one, so yeah. Um, and, uh, an even cooler form and rarer form is called spatial sequence synesthesia. This is when your mind, like, like that guy over there, you project like a timeline around you. So that guy, he sees January all the way till December. So this can actually really aid you in memorization. And yeah, and a, an even rare form and um, really interesting form is called time-space synesthesia. This is when your mind, this one's really, really hard to explain. For example, like it's basically, your mental calendar game is pretty strong. Like time is all over your mind. Let's say up here, there's like a bird flying from 1981. And over here is your cup of coffee from 2001. And there's like your desk from 1700s, whatever, you know. And because synesthesia is like living your life through um, extraordinary ways, there are always advantages and disadvantages. And I'm ta gonna talk about some from, uh, from various types of synesthesia. So let's start with the disadvantages first. So one of the most common forms of, common disadvantages is mind versus reality conflict. So let's say this guy here sees, um, let's say A in blue, but he's like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. In my mind, it's red. So he knows it's blue, but he's, he argues it's red, which doesn't make much sense, but that's true. Um, another, um, well, another disadvantage is that synesthetes tend to be bad at math, which might explain why I underperform in math sometimes, but um, for example, two plus three equals to five, and for synesthetes, this could be t uh, like pink plus three equals red, and pink plus, sorry, pink plus blue equals red, and pink plus blue is not red, and maybe if he knows the color theory, red is a primary color, and you cannot form, um, you cannot form red out of anything, because it's a primary color, so this can like really make him troubled in math. So he kind of has to take that elimination fact first, then solves it. So that's another disadvantage. And another disadvantage is like social awkwardness. You can actually start disliking people just because you don't like their names or like, I don't like Valerie because her name tastes horrible, for example. Or you don't like um, some people because the, the name gives a bad color or a bad smell in your mouth, like poop or I don't know. But, um, uh, one of the most common disadvantages is oversensation. So imagine you're in a fire alarm situation and if you have the, the lexical gustatory synesthesia, imagine like hearing all those noises and that triggers all those weird sensations all over your mind. That can be a problem, especially when you're trying to escape a fire alarm. Or imagine if you're in a choir and there are lots of different sounds. There are like violins, choirs, or, peop or crowd singing or whatever. Like all those different noises trigger different sounds in your mind. And imagine that oversensation in your mind or maybe oversensation in your smell or taste or whatever, that can be disturbing. Now another thing is called misophonia. And don't worry, this is a very rare form, but this actually, this is pretty bad. Um, this is where cert certain, um, uh, certain sounds can trigger negative emotions such as anxiety. But like always, there are always advantages to everything. And a common stereotype is that synesthetes are good at art which is, yeah, sort of true, I guess. Um, because synesthesia can actually really help you with um, areas of talent and art. And to tell you the truth, um, the advantages actually outweigh the advantages. It does more good than harm, which I will go through. So this is an example of what synesthetes can paint. Uh, so let's say, you, like, artists with synesthesia, what can, they can do is, like, you tell them a song, like, whatever, Taylor Swift, Bieber, whatever, and they can listen to it, and all these colors come up in their mind, and they actually draw it. So these are just some examples of what synesthetes draw based on hearing a song. Um, so this is another advantage is the ability to actually um, differentiate numbers and letters easily. This helps you with spelling and memorization as well. Um, so here's a, uh, a photograph taken by Marcia Smilak. So um, as crazy as the sound sh sounds, she uses her synesthesia to actually help her. It's like she uses it as a conscience to guide her. So what she did was she just takes out her camera, goes to the water, finds her reflection, and she waits for that perfect moment. Her synesthesia tells her this is the right moment. So she feels a sensation. That's when she presses her shutter, and it results in good photos. Perfect pitch is um, a common advantage of synesthesia. This is, if you don't know what that is, perfect pitch is when you're able to tell what the notes are for a song without actually looking at the sheets. And for synesthetes, well, if your synesthesia is related to music, it's really easy because um, let's say you hear do, re, mi. You don't know it's do, re, mi, but the color is always red, blue, green, for example. And because your mind is, or it could be taste, or it could, it could even be shapes, or so whatever, um, whatever thing corresponds to your mind, let's say do is a circle, red, or whatever, 
So because you know that, you know it's Do, Re, Mi instead of any other things. And obviously this really helps in making music. And uh, like I said earlier, composing music, lots of famous artists today, like Hans Zimmer, you know, the guy who does all those great films, Pharrell Williams, Lord, they all said that uh, synesthesia helps them create their music. Because your mind associates colors with, let's say, sounds, I'm sorry, sounds with circles or shapes or colors or whatever, or taste, it allows you to explore the different areas easily. It allows you to really be creative and experiment and discover more to your full potential. Now, oops. Memorization is probably the most um, common advantages. Because you always associate everything with colors or anything else, it's easy to memorize. Like for me, it's easy for me to memorize like uh, my phone number, if I get a new phone number, or anything like that, because you can memorize it by color, or by taste, or by sound. But there's a really extraordinary story about synesthesia and memorization, and that is the story of Daniel Tamed. So Daniel Tamed has Savant syndrome, and believe it or not, this guy was able to memorize um, 22,514 digits of you know, pi in mathematics in only five hours and nine minutes. And he claimed that this was down to synesthesia. And this guy has about at least five different forms of synesthesia. And he claimed that when he sees zero to nine, they have distinct, distinct sizes and shapes in space. And this really allows him to memorize it. And I know you probably don't get what he means, but this is, what, this is kind of what he drew to, uh, to explain to us. Um, so as you can see here, 53 times 131 is 6,943. Six and it, I know it's, you can't calculate with your mind, but somehow he's able to make that shape. And if you look at the shape, it actually complements each other, all those curls and all those circles. And this guy claims that every number he sees has um, a, num uh, a gender, a personality, a texture, a color, and a size and shape. And that's why it's really easy for him to help him. And because of this, he was able to memorize pi all the way there. So what does this mean? What is my point? My point is that synesthesia proves that not all disorders are purely bad. And in fact, with synesthesia, syn um, there's actually more good than harm. And many, even like, for example, autism, there are many famous people who had autism, like Albert Einstein, Charles Darwin, Isaac Newton, and they all end up successful. And synesthetes as well, um, like Stevie Wonder, Van Gogh, Hans Zimmer, Marilyn Monroe, Pharrell, Pharrell Williams, they all had synesthesia. And it really helped them with their careers, especially if your career is in art. Now, again, it proves that while you may be very bad in one thing, like while well, disorder may hold you back significantly in one thing, it can provide you with a great advantage and fire you to glory in another thing. Because just as the great Albert Einstein said, everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll live its whole life thinking it's stupid. And so I think calling synesthesia a disorder is really, it's more like a paradox than an accurate de depiction. Because it does more good than harm, like all the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. And so instead of calling it a disorder, let's call it an extra order. Um, and who knows, if synesthesia never existed, what achievements today would never have been achieved? My name is Wesley Trisnadi, and I hope you enjoyed my talk. Thank you.